the Grand Power Streebog 10 millimeter. Let's check it out. Grand Power is based out of Slovakia, and it's an area known for making really quality firearms. They first came out with a Strebog in 2018, and it was actually designed for the Slovakian military as a full automatic submachine gun. Very strong action, very heavy bolt system. So they started importing these into the United States as the SP9A1, and it became very popular. It wasn't long before they introduced the SP9A2, which was a non-reciprocating bolt handle, um, and then they came out with the SP9A3. That was a roller delay blowback system, which makes this very soft to shoot. Blowback can be pretty aggressive when it comes to uh, recoil. And so having a delayed roller blowback, like your HK, uh, it really softens the recoil, makes this very manageable. Now they've introduced the SP10A3. Uh, this is in 10 millimeter. And I'll tell you guys, you know, for something this size, 9 millimeters is great, but 10 millimeter gives you a lot of power. Plus, with the delay roller blowback system, it makes this very soft to shoot at the range. So it's just power under control. It's got a 20 round magazine. Uh, it's got all the features of the original Strebog. And guys, these are just solid firearms. And we want to give a big thank you to Gun Zone Deals, and we really appreciate Nate for sending different firearms for us to review uh, to bring all kinds of different things to you guys. And he did introduce me to the original Strebog that we did a review back in 2018. And I'll tell you what, guys, these are solid firearms built like a tank. Strebog S10A3, uh, solid firearm. Guys, we have tested all the different Strebog models and they have worked really well for us. Uh, with the A3 version, of course, you have the delayed roller blowback action, which really softens the recoil. Uh, typically, blowback in itself is a little bit harsh. Uh, in fact, there's more recoil with a blowback 9mm than a 5.56. So being able to tame that really makes this even more manageable. And in 10 millimeter, that's even more important, especially you know when you're with a nine millimeter, it's not so bad. But uh, this gives you the power of a 10 millimeter, very soft shooting. Now this is the SP9A3, and this was the original in nine millimeter. We have your standard Strebog mags. This is a 20 round mag for YouTube, but they also make a version, the SP9A3G, which takes Glock mags. So a lot of different options. Now there are a few differences between the SP9A3 and the SP10A3, uh, but I mean, we're gonna show you those minor differences. But overall, the housing itself is the same dimension. So any kind of brace that you have for the nine millimeter, you can put it on the 10 millimeter. But now up at the top, we have one of the SP9A3, and this is the G model for the Glock mags, but this is their carbine. And so they are making carbines, and a lot of that had to do with when the ATF was going after braces. Uh, they went ahead and made a carbine version. Uh, and this is a solid gun, and it has that roller delay blowback, which makes it super soft to shoot. This has become one of my favorite 9mm carbines to take to the range. And we've got a full review on this, and of course I'll have it annotated above for you guys to check out. All right, we're going to make sure the gun is unloaded. We have a paddle mag release here at the bottom. Uh, that's new for the 10 millimeter. That is really positive. I love it. Uh, but right here, we have a push button mag release, but it's also on the other side, and which makes it really natural to grab. Uh, so you have ambidextrous mag releases on either side. And we're going to check the chamber to make sure the gun is empty. The SP9A10 is offered on Gun Zone deals with the A3 Tactical Brace. 
Uh, it's all aluminum construction until it comes here to the back and it has a polymer piece to be able to, you know, put this next to your arm to brace it. And we have a strap that'll go around your arm. Uh, but then we have a Picatinny rail adapter on the back. Now, I really like this because I can adjust this up and down to fit whatever optic I'm using. And, and also, you can take this and switch it to the other side. So at this point right now, we're folding it over to the left side. Uh, there's no detent, but there is a detent into here where this thing doesn't move. But if you want to use it, you can just pull it around. And again, you can switch around the screws, change the mount, and you can switch it back over to this side. Very easy to do. You also get three 20 round magazines with the gun. Again, the top receiver is uh, aluminum and it is again the same pattern as your nine millimeter as far as adapters go, uh, but there are some differences and we're gonna check that out. Uh, of course, Strebog SP10A3 and then the Grand Power logo right here. There's proof marks on here which kind of give it that European look to it, which I really like. Uh, and then of course, right here on this bolt, it says US, but large bolt system right here. Now it is M-Lock compatible and here at the front we have three M-Lock slots and then we have a pretty extended Picatinny rail. And here with the SP9A3 we have two M-Lock slots and then the barrel extends past the handguard. Uh, here it's very flush and then you've got that extra M-Lock rail. Here on the magazine well of the 10 millimeter, uh, we have just some straight lines here. Here we have the original dots that come around. Uh, and even at the front, there are ridge lines uh, with this. You know, it just, just has a smooth surface, really. And then one big change, and this is something that I really like. They have the ambidextrous mag release here, but this paddle is very effective. Uh, on the original, we had our mag releases here and, of course, on the other side. Uh, but we didn't have the paddle. And while this has worked really well, I think the addition of the paddle mag release is just a great option. Now, this is your bolt stop on the 9mm. And this is ambidextrous. But here on the 10mm now, it has a more of an AR-15 style bolt stop. And so as we pull back our bolt and we just bring in the bolt stop right here, uh, we lock the bolt into place and then you can just release it. Uh, with the original, of course, the Ambi system, we can lock our bolt in, and it's nice, but it's got just a small little latch right here, and then when you hit it, it'll close it. And as far as the safeties go, I mean, they're pretty much the same. Very AR-15-like, but they are polymer. And here on the grip, there is another difference. So we have kind of a widened out area on the 9mm, and then all the dots. So a little bit different design, and I feel like that the angle as well is a little bit more straight with the 10 millimeter. Charging handle has this curve in it that makes it natural to be able to grab. Uh, it's a very short stroke on the action, and again, this is non-reciprocating. So when you're firing it, this is not moving. It's gonna stay in one place, unlike the SP9A1, which was reciprocating, and if you got your hand up here, it would let you know. One piece Picatinny rail all the way across the top. Uh, now one thing you'll notice here at the back, there is a little notch, and this is gonna be for a sight. So here up front, we have an AR-15 style uh, front sight that's buried down into the Picatinny rail. Uh, and that actually, that small notch will fit in this small notch, so you do have sights that are available without any optic. Uh, they're not high profile, but they will work. But on the originals, they had folding sights that just folded down. And actually, you could see the sight even with it folded down. Uh, and so it gave you a couple of options. Uh, these are not bad sights. They did have metal replacements, which I have put some metal sights on there as well. But then you lose the feature right here if you have the sight in the down position. Now it has an 8-inch barrel, uh, and it is threaded, and we do have a thread protector. And this is 9 16 by 24-inch thread pitch. So you can put suppressors on here if you want to, or you could even put a compensator on here. We were running one of the mini ACOGs, and this has the ACSS reticle in it. It's only a 1.5 magnification, but it really gives a very sharp image when you look through it. And of course, it has the pipe on the end. This is just an excellent little optic, and of course, I have the American Defense QD mount on here. The glass in this is just excellent, and again, with the ACSS reticle, it's one of the best combat reticles on the market. And these things are built like tanks, just like the Strebog. 
The AR-15 trigger definitely gives this an advantage, especially if you want to switch this out for other triggers. Uh, but we're going to check the trigger pull action. So we have just a tiny bit of take up. Uh, and then it hits the wall. And then there's the break. Reset is really fast as well. I mean, you hit that trigger just with a little bit of take up and it's ready to fire. But now as far as the brake, just a touch of resistance and then we have a brake. It's not a super crisp brake. Okay, checking the trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge. Five pounds, 12 ounces. Five pounds, six ounces about mil spec. Now, Fiocchi sponsors our ammo and we really appreciate it. And we shot quite a bit of 10 millimeter from Fiocchi for this review. Uh, but Global Ordnance sent quite a bit of Cellier and Belay, uh, and this is in the 10 millimeter ammunition. Uh, it was really good quality. And since they sent it, I do want to kind of give them a little bit of a shout out, but uh, just some of the regular full metal jacket bullets. Uh, one thing about this is it runs 2162, I believe it is, on the Global Ordnance website, which is a fantastic price for 10 millimeter. And we really appreciate Fiocchi for sponsoring our ammo. Uh, it's all made in the USA, one of the biggest suppliers of ammunition in the country. Uh, but Global Ordnance also sent quite a bit of Cellular and Bollet uh, 10 millimeter. So this is just going to give us a lot of ammunition. And we really appreciate Global Ordnance for sending this. And for Fiocchi. Man, I have loved the Strebog from the SP901 all the way up to the SP903, the SP903G, which takes Glock mags. All those are in 9mm. Now we have the 10 millimeter. I'll tell you that that delay blowback action in here makes it very easy to shoot. Uh, the 20 round magazines, uh, you know, they're translucent. They're working fine. We haven't had any issues whatsoever. And they may be 21 round. I haven't actually looked at the specs yet. Uh, but I think we're getting 21 rounds in here. But there's just a solid firearm. One thing I love about it is with the mag release, it's the paddle is so easy get a hold of it releases the magazine really fast and yet it holds it then you have side releases right here where you can just press them and they're ambidextrous not quite as easy to get to as that paddle but dropping the bolt non-reciprocating charging handle but the big thing about this is is how easy it is to shoot Now, obviously, we've had some issues with pistol braces, uh, and of course, the ATF is trying to classify them to make this a short barreled rifle, uh, and that may happen in the future. So, if you just put it on your cheek and shoot it, not a big deal, but this was really made for those with disabilities, and there's a strap here you can wrap it around your hand, and it allows you to shoot it with one hand. So, I mean, there's a number of ways to do it. Plus, I love this folding brace. It folds next to the pistol. And then, you know, I could shoot it this way. But overall, I mean, it's just a really solid firearm. I've always liked street bogs, and they've just gotten better and better. And with this 10 millimeter, you have the power. Man, they'll shoot well. Now for disassembly, it's pretty simple. Uh, right here is a pin and you wanna push it through and then on the other side, we're gonna to try to pull it out. It's a little bit tight, so I'm gonna take a punch. Just punch that straight out. Now the lower receiver will swing down. Then here at the back, you can just take your end plate and you can just drop it down and it'll come right out. Next, we're just gonna bring our charging handle out and then we have a really nice buffer. And of course, that's for the 10 millimeter. We can bring out our recoil spring and just go ahead and let the bolt system come right out. And the pin that goes right here just fell out. The pin is where the magic happens. Uh, right here is your delay system. And so when this pin drops, 
just like this. It drops into the lower position. It allows for this piece to move forward. So it allows it just to dwell for, honestly, microseconds before the bolt comes back, and that is your delay system. Uh, once you drop the pin out, you can pull this piece right off, and you can see the cavity or the groove that holds in the pin. Again, once the pin just drops down, it allows this just to move forward enough just to give you that delay. But this is a pretty heavy piece just in itself. But the bolt, as you can see, is heavy and massive. Uh, and here we have our, the bolt face right here, and of course our extractor. It's just a really solid system. And then in the top, your recoil spring and guide rod just go right here, and then you have this buffer. Now here is your firing pin, and that's where the hammer hits it. Uh, you have a retainer pin right here for your firing pin. And so all you need to do is to pop this out. So we're going to take a punch and just hammer this out. When you pull out your punch, make sure you depress the firing pin so it doesn't come flying out. Now it comes out, you can see the notch right here for your retainer pin, and then just give it a little bit of a shake, and the spring should come out. There we go. Now in a lot of blowback actions, they do have a spring on the firing pin, and this is just to help from having slam fires. Uh, this just protects that firing pin and keeps it in the place. For assembly, making sure that that notch is faced up when you put it in, you're going to need to hold your firing pin into place as you drive in your retainer pin. The retainer pin is recessed, so make sure that it's even on both sides, and then take your firing pin, just give it a little push to make sure that it's working. Now your charging handle can be switched to the other side, just bring it back to this circle right here, and this allows it to come loose. And then you can pull this right out, then you can switch it to the other side and pop it right in. Now to remove the little receiver, there's a pin right at the front, very similar to your pivot pin on your AR. Uh, it's a little tight, so we're gonna go ahead and push it through with a punch, and then that just comes right off. Now I had said that this was an AR-15 style hammer, which it is, uh, but this is a compartmentalized piece. There's metal all the way around it. Uh, there are no pins, no trigger pins. They must be housed inside this little mount. Uh, there's no information on how to remove this, so while I was thinking that you could probably change this out for a different trigger, uh, you know, that's, this may be a problem just because of the way this thing's set up. Uh, but again, there's just no access points outside. I'm sure someone will uh, give us an idea of how this works. But as far as we're concerned right now, this is just the way it is. But it does give you that AR-15 feel to it. And, you know, it is the same type components. Go ahead and bring your charging handle forward. For reassembly, uh, just go ahead and put your little receiver in and put that pin through. To reassemble the bolt, uh, there is a small divot right here, and that's where your pin fits through, or your little roller. We're going to drop it into place. Now, this will come out really freely, so you have to hold on to it uh, as you're assembling it. Now, take your bolt and put it into the back of the receiver. Uh, you want to, again, hold on to this little pin to make sure that it's in place. If it'll slide in, it's in place. And go ahead and push your bolt forward. Next one, take our recoil spring and guide rod. Get it into place as well. And then take the back plate uh, and then just set it low and then bring it up. And then you wanna line up these two holes, bring these together and it snaps right into place. Check for function and we're back in business. Now we do get a carrying case, just open it up. Um, you have your pistol, of course three magazines. Uh, we've got the brace on here, so it makes this a little snug to close, and of course owner's manual, you have a front sight tool. Uh, and so you have what you need. Uh, again, typically if you don't get the Picatinny plate on the back, there'll just be a flat cover, uh, and then you can adapt that to whatever you want to. But I really like the hinges on this case, and nice solid case. Great to tuck away your 10 millimeter Strebog. As far as price, $13.75 on the Gun Zone Deals website, uh, and that includes the A3 Tactical Brace Package. And again, you do get three magazines with the gun and a hard, that hard carry case as well. And that's one thing that Gun Zone Deals does is have a number of different packages, which really kind of help bring the price down. And they do carry all the other calibers. Uh, the magazines run about 45 bucks a piece. Uh, they're a little bit pricey, but these are excellent mags. 
Streebach did go through a lot of different mag changes uh, to get the right mag. They had some early on issues. We didn't have those problems. Uh, in fact, this is one of the originals. We're still using them, uh, but there were definitely documented cases. We did a number of different tests on their mag systems just to make sure they were up to par. But as far as pros and cons, uh, you have a very small compact firearm, uh, a great PDW type firearm, which I like to call it. You know, it is a, in the pistol form. It does have a brace, it's not a stock. But one of the big pluses for this is not only is it a very robust action made for military service, it has the roller delay blowback. That to me is a big plus for this gun. It is so soft to shoot. And then you bring it up to 10 millimeter, it just handles it. It's got a short eight inch barrel, but it holds up really well. And of course you can put a compensator or a suppressor on the end. Really nice Picatinny rail section. It does have integral sights. They're minimal, but they're there. Uh, and of course you can put any kind of optic on this, red dot, even a scope if you want to. Uh, it's fully ambidextrous, which makes it really nice. And a very solid upper platform, large bolt. And then we have the polymer down on the bottom, which you know tends to hold up very well. But overall, the SP9 series has been just exceptional. SP9A3, if you want to go in 9mm, this is an excellent option. Uh, you want to up it to 10, or you want to go with the carbine version. Uh, you know, they're making a number of different types. They've even got a 22 trainer. And one great thing, too, about a lot of these is a lot of companies have made aftermarket accessories. There's a lot of aftermarket support for these because so many of these have been sold. And the importer is Global Ordnance, and they handle any kind of warranty issues, which makes it really great. So guys, whether you go with the 9mm or the 10mm Streebog, uh, with that roller delay blowback system, it makes it really soft to shoot. Again, it's built solid and very compact, easy to tuck away for a vehicle, uh, going on a trip, <laughs> just having it for home defense. Just a solid option. And guys, this brings the 10mm power. Big thanks to Nate over at Gun Zone Deals. We really appreciate all of his help. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. SP901. Slovakia is based out of Slovakia. Okay. Slovakia is based out of Slovakia. <laughs> they changed their mags about three or four times. In fact, we did. <laughs> oh, you gotta be kidding. Twelve rounds. Twelve rounds. <laughs>